I feel like if I were to put these in front of someone, they wouldn't know the difference. I don't think they'd ever think there was anything suspicious. Hello everybody, my name is Merle, and today we are going to be making popcorn chicken out of, that was terrible normal, jackfruit. Jackfruit is like a magical vegan substitute. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna be using the canned jackfruit. Let's go ahead and start cooking. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take our little bouillon cube and add it to some warm water. Jackfruit, especially canned jackfruit, has a really briny flavor, so we wanna try to pull that out. That way we can neutralize the flavor and then add whatever flavoring that we want. Here we are, this is all perfectly dissolved. So now I'm gonna open my jackfruit, I'm gonna strain this puppy out. While you have this strained, you wanna go through and pick out any seeds that are in there. We don't wanna be dealing with that. I don't see any in here. We're gonna put these straight into our bouillon. Then we're gonna let these sit for like 30 minutes. They're just gonna marinate in there. I'm gonna set this aside and I will be back in 30 minutes. Okay, so this has been sitting for 30 minutes. Now we're gonna just drain you out. Beautiful. All right, now it's time to mix together our spices. So we've got garlic powder. <laughs> That's been sitting there for a minute. <laughs> garlic powder, like I was saying. Some onion powder. Oh my God, I swear to God. Let's do this to all of them first. A lot of people don't tell you this, but when it comes to onion powder, you're supposed to massage it first. And we've got some smoked paprika, some cayenne, some regular paprika. Make this saucy. And then some salt and pepper. Mix all your spices together. This is all mixed. We're gonna take our jackfruit, mix it with about a tablespoon of our spices. Don't get rid of these spices. You're gonna use them again later. Set those aside. Mix these up. Mmm, my God, it smells so good. Um, and now we're just gonna transfer these to our baking sheet. These really look like meat. I mean, chicken, pork, you name it. Yeah, look at that. Very fleshy over here. So these are all ready to go. I've got the oven preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 190 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna pop them in there for about 15, 18 minutes, let them dry out. And then we're gonna get to frying these bad boys. So I will be back. Okay, so while we're waiting for the jackfruit to bake, I'm going to mix together our batter and then the flour mixture that we're gonna use to coat these before we fry them. I'm gonna mix some non-dairy milk. I'm using almond milk, unsweetened. And then we got about a half cup of flour, some salt and apple cider vinegar. All right, so this is gonna be our batter. I like working with a batter personally when I'm frying things. It makes everything stick to it. The coating is much more even. So be very careful and very safe when you're working with hot oil. Ooh, that sound. I'm sorry if that sound makes someone want to like crawl out of their skin. And now that I've pointed it out, it probably will. And now we're gonna take our remaining spices, because you didn't throw those away, right? And then we're gonna add a cup of flour, cornstarch. This is all set. I'm gonna go get our jackfruit and then we can fry. Okay, we've got our jackfruit. So what's important with the fryer is you wanna make sure your oil is at about 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't forget, that's 190 degrees Celsius. Let's coat this in the batter first. Mm. This is slightly more fun than I expected. Okay, make sure we get all the excess off. When you get the excess off, it ensures that you get a nice even coat when you're frying. All right, look at you, what a superstar. That looks perfect. I'm gonna plop you right back on there. All right, she's ready. Here we go. Oh my. Yay! We're gonna let these fry for about two to three minutes. All things considered, this is a pretty easy recipe. Ooh, these are frying up like chicken. These look cool. Ah, uh, this is bringing me back to my KFC days in high school. All a girl can dream for is a nice crispy outside and then like a succulent, juicy inside. I'm like more proud that I successfully fried these than I am of how they come out. A couple of them are fighting over there. Oh my God, calm down, break it up. I would recommend not crowding the frying pan when you're doing this, because every time you add more in, it's gonna bring the temperature down. So you have a little more control and you can probably work more efficiently if you just do a few at a time. They are looking lovely. Woo! I'm scared. I don't like oil. This is why I don't like oil, it's unpredictable. Pull you puppies out. Yay, they look great. Very proud of myself right now. All right, let's fry the rest of these up and then I'm gonna give them a try. All right, look at these nugs. They are so cute and they're crispy. Honestly, they look the part. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of lemon and then of course salt, because it's salt. 
that special time of the episode where we see if I have a wild success on my hands or a horrible failure. <laughs> smells great. Looks great. Oh my god! Oh yes. my god. This is my favorite thing I've ever made on the show. Hands down. Hands down. I just bit into this and it literally exploded in my mouth. This is like jewels of flavor. I am so happy right now. Oh my God. This is uh, honestly exceeded expectations. Wow, jackfruit. <laughs> Give it up for jackfruit, come on. Oh man. I'm gonna go get some people up here, have them try this. I'm so happy, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. Yay. All right, here we are. <laughs> Silence. Oh. <laughs> A little nugget. Wait, I have no idea what this is gonna be. It looks and smells a little bit like popcorn chicken. They look like chicken nuggets. It looks like jackfruit. It looks like popcorn chicken or it looks like fried calamari. I love both things. Okay. Oh, as much as she loves me. No. It's too soon for you to say that. You can't say those words. You're gonna scare me away. You're gonna scare me away. Um, dip dip. That looks like chicken. The frick? It is chicken. No. <laughs> I'm just not a fan of this. I mm -hmm. like it. Wow. That's really good. Look at that, that's freaking chicken. But I have no idea what this is supposed to be. <laughs> is that garlic clove? Is it a mushroom again? No. What is that? You really don't know? It's jackfruit. Jackfruit? Yeah. We love jackfruit. We really do. I think it's, it's jackfruit. jackfruit. It's jackfruit. It's jackfruit. Yeah. Wow, I would not have guessed that. This is incredible. This is the best one you've done. Really? Hands down, the best thing you've given me in this show. See, the more I eat it, the more fried chicken it tastes like. Yay! That makes me happy. It looks like it enough and it has a good enough flavor that it would work. If you were to put this in front of me, I would 100% eat it. Flavor? Yes. It's a 10. Woo! Likeness to fried chicken, it's a six. I'm gonna give it a five. What? I'll give it a 10. 10! I love it. Five. Okay. Likeness overall, seven. 9.5. Oh my god! 9.5. It's the holidays, so you don't want to get an extra 0.5. This is a 10 out of 10. What? A 10 out of 10 for the That's a holiday bonus. We're going to be making a smoked ham out of watermelon. Basically, we're going to be smoking a watermelon. Full disclaimer, this recipe is going to take a while. So don't yell at me for this taking a long time. The first thing we're going to do is slice off the top and the bottom. So we've got some flat, surfaces to stand this big boy up. Damn, this thing is heavy. And then once we do that, we're gonna slice off the rind. So I'm gonna slice the rind all the way around so that there is no whiteness left. All right, we've got the first pass done. Looking good, Harold. That's what I've decided to name this watermelon. <laughs> Stop being weird. No white rind, it should be beautifully pink and smooth. Wow, check this out. Harold is bald as a cue ball. Now, what we're gonna do, take your very sharp knife carefully, and we're going to make incisions diagonally in our ham about an inch deep. Now, do the same thing on the other side. Okay, wow, that is scored. Score! <laughs> Sorry, low hanging fruit. Ah. <laughs> Dry rub time. The dry rub uh, is gonna infuse the watermelon with flavor. Simultaneously, it will also pull out a lot of that water. Cause like I said, watermelon is like almost 92% water. We gotta pull a lot of that liquid out. But meanwhile, we also want it to be getting nice, salty, delicious, hammy flavor. <laughs> hammy is the new adjective I've decided is uh, real. So we got some salt, coconut sugar, chili powder, smoked paprika, ground cloves, black pepper, some onion powder, and some garlic powder. Love garlic powder. Now we are gonna whisk this up, and now it's time to rub down the watermelon. Make sure you wanna get deep into your uh, cross section. Now we need to refrigerate this for 12 hours. Whoa, check this out, guys. Look at this thing. This looks meaty as can be. Previously, Harold, this is one that we did last night. This is technically a different watermelon. Lucinda, we'll call her. Lucinda's looking shrivelly. You can see the water is pulled up a bit down at the bottom, which is great. It's exactly what we wanted. So to make this as smoky as we possibly can, we're gonna be using hickory chips. Take these hickory chips and pour some water over them and then just let them sit for like an hour. Strain this out so that only like two tablespoons of the liquid remains in the bowl. And I'm just gonna put that directly into my roasting pan. Then I'm gonna get my roasting rack. 
Now move your ham to the roasting rack. Time to say goodnight, Lucinda. And we want to cover this tightly. Okay. We've got the oven preheated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 250 degrees Celsius. No, it's not. It's 230 degrees Celsius. <laughs> we got there. And I'm gonna let it bake for 30 minutes at that temperature. And then I'm going to reduce the heat to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, 120 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna let it bake for three hours. This is now the part where you break out Infinite Jest. After three hours, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take the foil off, and then I'm gonna let it bake for three more hours. And in the meantime, I'm going to make a nice little glaze for her for when she's done. So first, we're going to combine our oil with some ginger and garlic. Now that we've got the uh, garlic and the ginger sizzled up, we are going to add agave, orange juice, some more coconut sugar. Oh yeah, baby. Some chipotle. And this is, so again, Worcester sauce or vegan Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce, it's Worcester sauce. I say Worcester because I'm from Massachusetts and that's just programmed into my brain, but Worcester. Just put it in. There are bigger hills to die on, you know? Uh, some mustard and some salt. Wahoo. I'm gonna stir all this together. Ah uh, yes, this glaze is gonna be magnificent. Okay, so now that everything's combined, I'm going to let it stay at kind of like a medium high heat so it comes to a simmer. And then once it comes to a simmer, I'm gonna turn the heat back down to medium and I'm gonna keep stirring it and let it cook for like 10 to 12 minutes. Alrighty, so our glaze is reduced down by about half. I'll see you guys in like three more hours. Whoa, check this out. This is like, a touchdown, like through the, I don't know, sports, the finish line, uh, the quarter line, what is it called? End zone, go long. Whoosh, that's me throwing the ham. This looks so awesome. I'm so happy, I'm excited, I'm hungry. Anyway, I'll stop freaking everyone out. Time to glaze. <laughs> I'm gonna glaze you up. There it is. And then we will stick it uh, in the oven to broil anywhere from like five to 10 minutes, just to get a little more color. But I'm very excited because it looks so good. I mean, it can't taste that bad, right? Cause it's a watermelon and like watermelon's fairly innocent. Now I'm gonna put you back in to broil and then, then it's time to try it. And I'm really excited. Oh, okay. We're in the home stretch here, people. See, I know sports after all. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time to try this ham watermelon ham. It looks quite a bit like cartoon meat. Confused. The only word that comes to mind. I'm like, is this dessert? Is this dinner? Is this an appetizer? Is this good? Is this bad? I would say it tastes pretty good. Does it taste like meat? No. I'm very, very excited to see what they think. I think this will be the most confused they've ever been. It, it, hmm. Is it a glazed ham? Mm -hmm. I do know my foods. Well, oh, check it wow. out. Oh yeah. my God, what is that? <laughs> you know me. It's gotta be something weird, right? I know what it is. You do? Yeah, I know what it is. How do you know what it is? Post it on your Instagram like a stupid person. Oh, <laughs> you're wow. the only person who checks my Instagram that aggressively. Well, you know, I have to keep tabs. <laughs> 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 no, that can stay in, that can stay in. It looks great. I mean, it looks, it's got a nice gloss to it. Did you make this? Oh yeah. Girl. Mm -hmm. You got a man. Mm, nope. <laughs> you want a girl, please? I mean, hey. It smells like dirt. <laughs> no offense. What? It smells like dirt to you? Yes. I would say visually, it almost looks like raw tuna. Why is it like, Jiggly like that. <laughs> it looks almost like cranberry-ish, like a glob. glob. Yes, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Right? It's kind of cool. It is cool. Oh wait, there's seeds. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of seeds. You know, really get intimate with that thing, whatever that is. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Get to Hello. know it. Oh, hi, is this your first time? Mine too. <laughs> It's very um, wet. <laughs> is it cold or warm? Warm. <laughs> is that tomato? What is it? I'm gonna let you figure that out. <laughs> I really, really don't like that. Wow, 
That's so good. Really? Yeah. I can't believe you hate it so much. Other people like it. Yeah, Dan told me he liked it. When I, I mean, it tastes delicious. Like that goes without saying. It's, uh, it's got like a nice salty sweet thing going on. The texture is wild. So it's like my mind is trying to rectify like what I'm seeing versus what I'm tasting. You told me you were gonna come teach me how to cook vegan food. Please don't ever come over and teach me this. No. It, like I didn't expect like the burst of moisture. It's like every bite into it comes like a gush of something. What's gushing? I can't tell what this is. Is that a watermelon? <laughs> yeah. <gasps> what? <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I smoked a whole watermelon. <laughs> no. Yeah. Bro, why? Why not? I want to know what it tastes like. That's not what watermelon's supposed to be. You don't like watermelon. I know. I don't like this either. I mean, I guess it makes sense now that you say it. <laughs> that why? Like, I didn't really question it. I was just like, all right. My mind is blown. My mind is really blown. Oh, that makes me A so watermelon. Blown. I know. It's unsettling. It's on, like Rosemary's Baby. Vegetarian-wise, like you have so precious little to eat at most places. Mm -hmm. If this were on the menu, I'd totally order this. Cool, okay, great. Well then, if, I'm gonna take that as a success. Great. Okay. Thank you. I'll take <laughs> okay, great, Thanks. you can have it. Right? <laughs> Thank you so much. We are going to be making calamari with coconuts. To break into a coconut, you are gonna need a very sharp knife and a mallet. This is a vegan show, just saying. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shave down this top part here with our very sharp knife. Very, very, very sharp knife. So we wanna shave it down until you see the brown little head underneath. A little fire cut. This isn't even the dangerous part. This isn't even close. This is the brown that we want. Do you see? I'm in a weird mood today. That was just me warming you up. It only gets more and more dangerous from here. Because we're gonna take this butt of this knife and you're gonna grip this in your safety grip, which is like holding a pencil. Somebody's gonna yell at me for this, I know it already. Firm grip, firm. A firm grip is a must. You also need to have passion behind your wrist when you're doing this because you can't have any second thoughts. There's no going back. And focus, okay? Here we go. Okay, we're gonna do this a lot. Ah. That's the sound we like to hear. <laughs> My points for being chosen for the roster of being on a desert island just skyrocketed just now. Inside of coconuts is this delicious liquid we call coconut water. You probably buy some horrible version of this at the grocery store, but there is nothing better than coconut water from a fresh coconut. Ah, the sound of life. Look at this beauty. Looks delicious. This one looks pretty mature. You want to keep the mature coconuts around. In life too, you know, the mature coconuts are the ones that'll have your back. A little life tip. Ah! I want to drink it out of this. It's worth it. Delicious. Let's empty our coconut water out. That is good stuff, guys. That is full of electrolytes. We got a damp washcloth, lay it out here, cutting board on top. We got no more of that risky business going on. We're gonna come down in a final action here. One final chop. Like that. You're gonna put your other cloth over the top of this bad boy. You could take your mallet. This is where the wrist comes into play. If your wrist gets all wishy-washy, zigzagging all over the place, you're not gonna have a consistent straight cut. It's gonna go all over the place. You're not gonna be able to scoop the meat out as well as you would otherwise. Okay, here we go. Hell yeah, oh my God, damn. All right. Yeah. God, I'm so good. Oh, would you look at that. Now see, that is the stuff of the god. Before we get to these two little friends of ours, we're going to mix up our marinade. For the marinade, we're gonna use caper juice, olive oil, lemon juice, lemon zest, and my favorite thing in the world, garlic. Give it a little stir. Cool, I'm gonna set this aside. So to clean the meat out, we're going to take a spoon now, this is the opposite. This is the come down from the rush you just had from pounding this thing into oblivion. Now you're going to be tender and gentle. What you wanna do is try, if you can, to get the meat out in one fell swoop. 
So this is what you want. I did a good job. You basically want one big slab like this, because then we're gonna cut it into calamari strips. Pick off some of the, you know, the little husk parts that stick to the meat. So I'm gonna cut these into half inch strips, and then I'm gonna plop them directly into my marinade. It looks like a squid. When I first heard of it, I was like, what? But now I see it. Okay, put them all in there. I'm gonna cover this up, and I'm gonna refrigerate it, and I'm gonna let this marinate for about two to four hours. I know it's a long time. Start reading that book you've had on your nightstand that you're pretending that you're gonna finish, but now you're not going to. Take this opportunity to do that, and I will be back in two to four hours. Goodbye. Oh my God. Okay, that's as good as that's gonna get. Okay, all right, so we've got our little calamari strips out of the fridge, ready to go. And then over here, we've got our mixture. We're gonna have uh, some non-dairy milk. I'm using almond milk, unsweetened. And then some apple cider vinegar. Mix it up a little bit. So over here, we've got our dry mixture. And we're gonna add some all-purpose flour, some semolina flour, and some salt. We're gonna work right down the line. We're gonna take out our marinated calamari strips. We're gonna put them in our liquid mixture. Then we're gonna let it drip off all the excess, and then you toss it in the dry mix. I use my hands, because it's the easiest way to evenly coat it. And this way you can knock off all the extra stuff too, so you don't get like chunks of flour when you're frying it. I'm gonna put it right in. <gasps> ah, ah, yay! The one-handed uh, dry shake is after you've been doing it for a while, you know? So you know I'm a pro. Wow, these crisp up pretty quickly. Woo! Yeah. Ah, I don't like that, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. But this is a beautiful strip. Yay, this is how I've decided I feel comfortable operating around the hot oil. Oh, oh my God, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Thank you. Oh, oh my God. I don't like it. All right, look at these. These look amazing. I feel like if I were to put these in front of someone, they wouldn't know the difference. I don't think they'd ever think there was anything suspicious, but we have to see what they taste like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I don't know about coconut as calamari, I'm not gonna lie, but. Oh my God, Woo! that is fresh. I feel like I'm floating in the ocean right now. I like it, I like it, I like it. I'm very excited about this, feeling very proud. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my friends in. Let's have them try this. We got nothing to worry about. I feel like they're gonna love this. It, it looks, looks like, like a bloomin' onion. Ah! <laughs> These are french fries. No, they're not. French fries? No. French fries are vegan already. <laughs> they're little fingers. <laughs> mm. huh. Interesting. Shrimp cocoa. Mmm, mmm. It's an onion ring. Wait, that's already vegan. <laughs> Squid? Yes, calamari. It meant to be calamari? Yes. Oh, calamari? Yes! Yay! Oh my god, that makes me so happy. This is so weird, because the texture is so, so spot on. Well, let me ask you this, are you liking it? I, you know, <laughs> what is this made of? You gotta guess. Some type of tofu paper? I'm gonna guess onion without even no. biting it. No? No, it's not an onion. No. Is this a mushroom? Nabi. Oh, I know what that is. You do? It's coconut. How do you know? I love coconut flesh, that's why. Mmm. Are you kidding? This <laughs> is impossible! Oh my god! No freaking way! way. This is a coconut? Yeah. This is amazing! You're in a restaurant. Here you go, sir. Mmm. Oh. Can I take you out after uh, your shift's over? That's what I would say. Not to women now, though. Like Mr. Calamari, I'm gonna say a nine. Solid nine. Nine. Nine? Yeah. I would say seven. <laughs> I gave it a two. <laughs> Overall, I'm gonna give it a 10. 7.5 out of 10. It's so good, you like it? I do, I really loved yeah. it. I'm very pleased with your work, well done. No, no. Yeah! <laughs> Okay, please She's cut. excited. Please cut. Cut. <laughs> cut, cut, cut. Great.